Welcome to Easter worship. This is a joyous day, a joyous worship time, and though we cannot gather geographically, we can certainly gather in worship and in the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit gathers us together. This is worship for the Presbyterians in Laurel and Belden, Nebraska, and it's also for anyone else who wishes to participate in worship with us, to, to worship our Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, with us. He is risen. He is risen. That is what happened on that first Easter morning. They found that he was not in the tomb any longer. We will include communion in this service, and uh, we at the Presbyterian Church share an open communion. It's open for all who would share, who, all who would come to the table, all who would claim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and eat the feast that he has prepared for us, the Holy Sacrament of Communion. So if you have not already prepared yourself for that, I invite you to go find some bread uh, and some juice and um, be prepared to commune with us in this service. Let us begin our worship, for our help is in the name of the Lord. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day when healing touches the suffering. When loneliness discovers a family, when peace caresses the stressed. This is the day the Lord breaks free of death's clutches, rolls away the stone, folds the grave clothes into a neat pile. This is the day the Lord has made, the day of sin's defeat, the day of resurrection, the first day of the new creation. This is the day. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. I will be sharing the Easter story with you as it is written, uh, paraphrased by Anne Weems. O Lamb of God, O Lamb of God, O Lamb of God, with the slaying of the Paschal lambs you died upon a tree. Your sheep scattered and hid in darkness, weeping. It was over. Three days those who loved him huddled, their hearts trembling, their faces swollen from tears. They would no longer see Jesus. He himself had said from the cross, it is finished. They felt finished too. While the early morning had not yet found its son on that first day of the week, Mary Magdalene walked through the darkness to the tomb and found the stone rolled away. She ran and found Peter and that other disciple whom Jesus loved. They have taken Jesus out of the tomb, and I do not know where to find him. Peter came into the tomb and saw the linens lying there, the head linen rolled up by itself. Then the other disciple came into the tomb, and he saw, and he believed. He saw, and he believed. We who have sought these Lenten days to see Jesus, do we see, and do we believe? Who do we say that he is? He is the one who gathers the children to himself. He is the one who speaks with women, even foreign women, even Gentile women, even women of the streets. He is the one who sits down to eat with tax collectors. He is the one who eats with sinners. He is the one who touches lepers. He is the one. The disciples went home, but not Mary. No, not Mary. She stayed. She wept. She bent to look into the tomb, and there she saw two angels, one at the foot where Jesus had lain and one at the head. 
Woman, they asked, why are you weeping? They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. I do not know where he is. Did you not know I would be about my father's business? Who do you say I am? Mary said, Rabboni. Having turned, she saw whom she believed to be the gardener. Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Sir, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. All Jesus had to say was, Mary, 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 Mary. Oh, Mary, do you not know me? Rabboni. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there no other has ever known. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And he walks with me and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling, but he bids me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me is calling. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known. Do you not know me? Rabboni. Yes, she knew him. She knew Jesus. She ran to tell the others, I have seen Jesus. And there it is, our Lenten search, that which we have waited for, that which we have sought, that which we have worked for. He is not some goody-goody God. He is justice. He is mercy. He is humility. He is love. And Mary saw him. Mary knew him. Mary followed. Mary believed. Mary ran to tell the others. Just a 
simple carpenter with healing in his hands. But could they really understand? They could not. They listened to the teaching that they wondered what he meant about a father's plan. They heard, but could they really understand? They could not. They could not. But could they really understand? They could not. So finally, upon a rugged Could they keep him in the grave? Could they keep him in the grave? Could they keep him? Could they keep him in the grave? Could they keep him in the grave? Could they keep him in the grave? They could not. They Praise God, they could not keep him in the grave. Mary ran to tell the others. And later that night when the doors were shut, Jesus came to them and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he always had said this, and he said it again. After he had shown them his hands and his side, Peace be with you. From the beginning, it had been peace. It was the song of the angels in Bethlehem. It was the song of Jesus, and Peter preached it to the people. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. If we see Jesus, we know that he preached peace. But the thing that's so hard for us is this. We do see Jesus. 
And we know Mary and Peter and all the others believed that we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. But that was then and this is now. And it's a different world. We are a different people. Can't we disciple in a, a more modern way? Not everyone can preach peace. Can't we be on the kitchen committee? Can't we make more rules? Can't we write a check? And yet, and yet, and yet he said, as God sent me, I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. He sent them out just as he sends us out to all the nations to tell God's glory, his story of peace and goodwill. Easter comes, the shroud that covered our world is destroyed, for our God has swallowed death. We shall no longer look for him among the dead. He calls to us to follow, to believe in our hearts that the people of this world will someday love one another. Really, love one another. If we believe, we know that that is not a naive hope, but it's God's promise. We shall not die, but we will live in him who died for us. On Easter morning and on every morning, let us in chorus sing, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And then with Mary, let us run to tell the others, we have seen Jesus. i 
pray with me. Early in the morning before chaos was awake, you tiptoed quietly past, surprising God, and whispered the word which caused grace and love to blossom into creation. Early in the morning while the disciples slept, Jesus, son of the living God, you prepared a feast to fill their emptiness. You rolled away their hardened hearts to open them to your grace. You whispered their names to awaken them to new life. Early in the morning, while we are still drowsy, you sing your songs to us, Holy Spirit. Hymns of hope, cantatas of compassion, psalms of peace, litanies of love. God of community, holy in one, early this morning we bring our prayer to you as Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not a Presbyterian table. It's, it's not the table of this congregation. It is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we invite all who would come to it to come and feast on this holy meal. Let us pray. Here at this table, we are nourished by your steadfast love, God of new mornings. As you pour out your spirit on the bread and the cup, fill us with the grace of Jesus. As we have been raised to new life, may we reach out to those who have fallen. As we have been fed, may we feel the hunger of the world. As we have seen the empty tomb, may we bear witness to the presence of the risen Lord in our lives. Then, when we are united with all the saints, may we gather around your table, one people lifting our voices in praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. On that night when Jesus was betrayed, he was having his Passover meal with his disciples, and they were sharing fellowship, and he was teaching, and at one point he took the bread that was on the table and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this bread is my body, my body broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Eat it and re remember, remember me. Then he took the cup that was at the table and blessed it. And after pouring it, he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood, my blood shed for the forgiveness of all. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Now, if there is more than one of you sharing communion together in your home, I invite you to offer the, the elements to one another. You might take the bread and break it off. And then dip it in the cup. We do this to remember Jesus Christ who said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing.
we are somewhat scattered like the sheep were when Jesus was arrested when they all left him and, and scattered but we're not scattered in that same way we're scattered geographically but not in spirit we are gathered together as one in spirit and there will come a time again when we can gather in our sanctuaries and in our homes and in our public life, we, we will be able once again to gather. But for now, we are gathered together by the Holy Spirit of the one who rose from the grave. Let us pray. Nourished at this table, O oh God, may we know Christ's redemptive love and live a new life in him. Give us who are fed at his hand grace to share our bread with the hungry and with the hungry of heart. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory. And we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Jesus Christ, with Christ, all glory and honor are yours, compassionate God, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church now and forever. Amen. As you leave this worship experience, I offer these words of blessing from Jesus. My peace I give unto you. It's a peace that the world cannot give. It's a peace that the world cannot understand. Peace to know, peace to live. My peace I give unto you. May you have the peace and the joy of Easter morning, knowing that Christ is risen. And we are called to love one another as he has loved us. Go in peace and serve our Lord. Amen.